Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about why billionaires don't pay taxes. Let's get right into it. The country's wealthiest citizens pay almost no income tax. The figures are nearly incomprehensible. According to a report called Billionaire Bonanza 2020, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos increased his already massive fortune by $75 billion during the first 17 months of the COVID-19 pandemic. During the same time period, fellow aspiring astronaut and Tesla CEO Elon Musk reportedly increased his wealth by $150 billion, while Facebook co-founder Mark Zuckerberg increased his wealth by $74.2 billion. The report, co-published by the Institute for Policy Studies and Americans for Tax Fairness, examines the accumulation of wealth by US billionaires during the pandemic era. Since it was last updated in August 2020, the estimated wealth of all these phenomenally wealthy individuals has only increased. Despite their individual economic growth, the country's wealthiest people frequently pay no federal income tax. ProPublica's widely read, ongoing in-depth reporting on a vast throve of recently leaked Internal Revenue Service IRS, documents reveal that billionaires such as Bezos and Musk all avoided paying any federal income taxes in previous years, some for multiple years. Even before the IRS leak, it was common for journalists to look into the legal means wealthy people use to avoid paying federal income taxes. After all, if tens of millions of Americans pay federal income taxes each year, why shouldn't the country's wealthiest citizens? How do people with unfathomable fortunes manage to owe no federal income taxes to the IRS? The vast majority of working Americans are paid hourly or on a regular basis. Income taxes are typically deducted automatically in both cases. People with a high net worth, on the other hand, often derive the majority of their income from assets such as stock holdings, real estate or other investments. As the value of those assets rises, the stock market rises, pieces in their art collection become more expensive, the real estate market shifts in their favour, so does their total wealth. That income is only taxable if they actually sell the asset that generated it. As a result, unlike the ordinary wage and salary owners who pay taxable income in real time, very high net worth individuals can choose whether or not to pay income taxes on the growth of their wealth. At its highest, the current federal income tax rate imposes a tax rate of 37% on individuals earning $523,600 or more and married couples earning $628,300 or more. It is not uncommon for business owners with a high net worth to pay themselves lower salaries in order to avoid the tax rate in this income bracket. For example, as Amazon's CEO, Bezos earned only $80,000 per year. Apple co-founder Steve Jobs, former Hewlett Packard CEO Meg Whitman, Google co-founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin, and Facebook Zuckerberg all accepted $1 per year salaries, most likely for the same reason. Remember when Senators Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders proposed their own wealth taxes during the 2020 campaign season? A regular wealth tax would finally ensure that income from wealth is counted alongside income from work. So while wealthy corporate executives could still reduce their federal income tax by accepting comically low salaries, their existing wealth, their existing wealth would still be taxed. If income from wealth functions differently and is taxed differently than income from work, how is it used to purchase something? How does an asset become spendable cash? The short answer is that wealthy people frequently rely on loans. For many of these people, rather than selling stocks or real estate and using the proceeds to fund their lifestyle, they borrow money and use it to fund their lifestyle. Banks are much more willing to make large loans to wealthy people with extremely low interest rates. According to Business Insider, billionaire investor Larry Ellison, for example, used some of his stock shares to open a $9.7 billion line of credit in 2014. Last year, the outlet reported that Musk used a portion of his Tesla stock to secure a $550 million loan. Borrowed money is not taxable because it is not considered income. A bank will consider someone with a few billion dollars in stocks, or even a few million, to be extremely low risk so they can fund those lifestyles and enjoy the benefits of their earnings without having to pay taxes on them. On top of that, people with a lot of money often use their money to hire professionals, donate to lawmakers, and invest in policies that keep their taxes low and their wealth growing unrestrictedly. Tax lobbyists working on behalf of the country's wealthiest individuals and corporations facilitate and maintain direct access between wealthy people's economic interests and policymakers, essentially ensuring that the country's wealthiest individuals and corporations have a consistent foothold on Capitol Hill. Tax lawyers also prepare for the possibility that their multi-million or multi-billion dollar client will be audited by the IRS, a disproportionately rare practice that allows the wealthiest Americans to illegally avoid paying an estimated $175 billion in taxes each year. 
Due to years of repeated budget cuts, the IRS rarely has the staff or internal resources to conduct the costly, labor-intensive auditing process required to force the largest corporations and wealthiest individuals to pay what they owe the IRS and any associated penalties. Those missing billions are currently required to fund a number of major national initiatives and much-needed infrastructure investments. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on any future content we'll produce for you guys. We're signing off now, but we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one.